Hello, adventurers! I'm Gray, and welcome back to Graveyard Keeper. The game's so good they named it after me because it has a gray in graveyard. Do I have to make this joke every time? Absolutely, and I should probably do it even more often just to annoy everyone. Anyway, there's a whole lot to do. I'm excited. If you are on spring break right now, hopefully you all are having a good time. I am really tired just in general this break, and I really needed this break. So hopefully you're, you all are enjoying it as well if you're on it, or if you're just in quarantine right now due to coronavirus. Hopefully you're also having a good time and aren't too bored with nothing to do at home. I I think that you can always find something to do. There's always something available to entertain you, to have a good time, even if it's not what you normally do. And we'll, we'll make it through this together. For now, though, there are a couple comments I want to quickly read through. Nothing too much. There are some corrections from comments from before that were a little bit off. And now I know that the garden bed with sticks can be used to grow lentils only which is a high value item, so that might be good for making money and other things like that. Um, beyond that, there were a couple useful bits of info. For one, Clotho, the fairy princess, queen, witch person, goes inside around midnight, so later than most people do, but she still does go inside. I'm not sure when she comes out, but probably during the day sometime. Sleeping. Like, I asked this question earlier, whether meditation or sleeping is better. Sleeping is better. Sleeping restores your stamina a lot faster. However... I was thinking, like this isn't in the comment, but I was just thinking that that would mean meditation is better or passing time, right? I, because sleeping, you have to be, you have to be, you have to be tired to sleep, I believe, right? Meditation, you can kind of just hop on, like right now, I can just hop on and meditate. And it passes time quickly without needing to sleep at all. So that's a good thing. There, I had a question about the satanic signs. When I was talking to Snake earlier, and he talked about the dungeon, which I'm going to go into today, by the way. I'm going to clear out my inventory, because I was recommended to sort of clear out my stuff before I go to the dungeon. So I'm going to do that. I wish it was like a deposit everything button, but hey, this isn't too big a deal. But there were, in, in like the menu over there, there's like a satanic sign. I was wondering what that does when I decorate the dungeon room. And apparently I need a progressive Snake to learn more about that, so I'll work towards that. Probably right now, actually, since it's not much else to do on Snake Day. Also, I was wondering if I could die on this little vent here that I died at before, the, the hot floor. <laughs> Turns out, no. It's a safe thing to walk on now, even though it makes me go transparent for some reason a little bit when I stand on it. Eh, actually, it's not transparent. It's just a little glow. A little glow. Yeah, but I don't actually die on this anymore. That was a scripted event. Okay, and finally, when fighting bats, I, I can swing once and run backward to avoid them. So that would be a very good thing to do whenever fighting. And with slimes, I can hit them twice before doing the exact same thing, running backwards. Okay, so Snake, let's go in. Let's go into this place and see what there is to is to be found. So now that I've come in here with an empty inventory, I can basically hold whatever I find. I don't want to waste too much of my stamina on useless stuff. Oh crap. Back up. You can't touch me back. Oh. I have to get used to their movement patterns. That's right. I mean, it's not too. It's not like they deal that much damage. Honestly. Well, it's only when I start getting low on health that I really have to pay attention to all that stuff. But I can find some neat things in here. I can get two hits in before I have to back up, apparently. Slimes honestly aren't too bad either. If I can get them in a corner, I can just keep hitting them. This is more, this is more like an adventure now. However, my stamina is going to quickly run out in here. I can feel it. Especially when I keep swinging wildly. Man, I really should come in here with like food or something. Is there going to be like a treasure chest or something like rare in here that I need to find? Oh, health potion. Oh, that's pretty cool. I would like a stamina potion right now though. Maybe if I hunt around a little bit. If I get to the next floor, would that be enough to allow me to skip straight to it next time I enter the dungeon? Cause this looks like the area to enter the next floor. I'm just taking a look around. I'm curious about what this dungeon is like because it this is a rapid use of stamina in here. Boop, boop, nothing. There's a good amount of metal scraps though, which is nice. Hey bats, I don't feel like fighting you right now. I'm too lazy, and I don't really need your wings at the moment. But I would like what's in these pots. Boop, ceramic bowl and some lentil seeds. Speaking of lentils. Stop it. 
Oh, I need to kill every enemy on the floor. I don't have enough stamina to kill all enemies. Or do they... Ow, ow, now I'm taking heavy damage. Dang it, now I have to manually leave and I, <laughs> and I don't have the stamina to fight back. And they can just keep whacking me. Now I'm a bit low on HP now. It's fine though, I think I'll be able to get out. Do the enemies stay dead after I leave the dungeon and come back in later? I feel like that's the case. Also, how much does a health potion heal? 50. That's pretty decent. I'm gonna sleep now anyway though, so it's not a big deal. Oh, snake left. That's alright, I'll save the dungeon for a future time. This was the stuff I was uncertain about. Cost skulls. My favorite. I love things that cost skulls. Well, it looks like today's Inquisitor Day, but I'm not quite ready to bring him any wine, which is unfortunate. It's fine though, it's fine. Let's just take our stuff out, because I don't think we're going to go to the dungeon for a little while. We're going to work on some other stuff right now. Man, there's so much wood just laying around the west part of the graveyard. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna need to slowly clear that out over time. I do know that there is something underneath some rocks in the pass to the north of the church. That was what the zombie told me. So if I go north of the church, somewhere around here, underneath some rocks in the, in the pass. So I think like up here or something. There should be some like zombie ingredients or something. I'm not sure what rocks it means. Maybe here? No, that's just how to get infinite stone. What about this? This must be the place Gunter was talking about. I should start looking for that zombie. Oh! Oh, underneath these rocks. Hey! Look who it is. I found a guy. A new technology. Create. Start building sawmill. Zombie woodcutting. Okay. Wait, what can I do with this guy? What? Is he, is he a, does he count as a body? Should I bring him to the, to the body place? To my morgue? I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can put him in there and what happens if I do. Well, I threw him on the autopsy bed. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay, so I can do some neat stuff if I get lucky enough with it. If I remove the heart, I know it removes two skulls. So if it removes two red skulls, that would, I could make it a perfect six whites. Hmm. You know, I'm curious if this body can even decompose. Because it doesn't have a quality thing. It doesn't seem to have the green line going down. Maybe this body lasts for an infinite amount of time. It has work efficiency instead of decomposing. I'm not sure if it's a good idea to autopsy on it yet. Because it might be able to be a worker for me. I just need to make the right table for it, which I'm not quite sure where it is. Well, it's a good thing I didn't just immediately <laughs> autopsy this body because there's a site that I can use it for, which is basically an infinite sawmill if I can find it. Ooh, okay. Maybe I should wait until it's daytime. May I take a look around? They say it's a forest near the river, which is probably up higher. Yeah, it's up higher. So I'm gonna have to go through these bats. Can I fight? Uh, I can't fight while holding him. Whatever. It's fine. It's fine out here. There's not too many. Oh, he's stuck on some bushes. Stupid. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. Now come with me. What shall I name you, zombie? I name you Bay. <laughs> As in Zombie. You're the best zombie. Oh, there's more bats. Please leave me alone. Somewhere up here. I think it's right at this tree. Big tree sawmill. I thought this was where you make it. It said create sawmill is what I've unlocked. Hmm. And I can. And it said to get a zombie working for it. But how, how do I get this to be made? Do I have to unlock it? Is it like a technology that I've just unlocked? The ability to unlock it? Yeah, I've definitely unlocked some things. Zombie gardening? Zombie vineyard? Zombie brewery? Zombie winery. Smithing, we have weapons, of course. We should probably make a better sword before we go back into that dungeon. That might be a good idea. How about in here? Is there zombie mining? Zombie wood cutting. Okay. So we can start building a sawmill for infinite wood if we get the zombie going. That might be useful. 
So I don't have to worry about getting wood myself for the most part, because I can just have a zombie do all of it. I can get zombie mining as well. I need a little bit more blue points to do a lot of things, though. And for that, I'm going to need to do more prayers, do more worship stuff. I'm going to see how much it would cost to build a sawmill for my zombie friend. Okay. Oh! Hey, that's convenient. It's probably going to take a lot of energy to make. It's actually not that bad. What the heck? Oh my gosh. Hey, can I get you working for this place, zombie? How do, how do, how do I do this? Oh! Is he working? Oh, I think he's I think he's doing doing a job, maybe? How many zombies do I need to have working here for this? Upon further research, it looks like I can hire two zombies here. So the first one here can be put on the tree, and he'll just keep chopping wood and put him into here automatically for an infinite wood supply, which is pretty cool. However, if I want them to deliver the wood straight to my place, I need to use another zombie at cargo here, and he'll bring it straight to my home base into my timber stockpile. This is exciting! If I can get a lot of zombies going in all sorts of different things like mining and woodcutting and like iron and gardening and all this stuff, I don't actually have to do all that stuff myself and the zombies will just take care of all of it. This is automation. <laughs> automation through, uh, through labor, but that sounds weird because automation is supposed to stop labor, but hey, it stops my labor and these guys are basically like machines and that they never get tired anyway, so you know. Just like the slit. Wait, I, I shouldn't say. <laughs> I was just wondering, if I have a zombie to just bring me infinite wood, what am I going to do about all this wood that I have here? There's, there's a lot. And it's kind of in the way. <laughs> I mean, I could probably deal with it over time later on, but... It'd be nice if there was an easy way to just transport that back. Maybe I can get a zombie to just pick up wood just on the streets and deliver it. I should probably bring my diary over to the astrologer as well at some point. I feel like that would be that would be helpful in progressing things a little bit. I'll go through the quicker way underground. Hello there, Mr. Astrologer and Fisherman. Here's your diary. Great, great. How many important things there must be in this book. Amazing. I forget what voices I give people, so I just change it every time I play the game again. I haven't felt so alive for a long time. Um, so how can I open the portal on which hill? Let me see. You need to craft a spirit laser. Ah, yes, of course, a spirit laser. But I don't know what a laser is. Sorry. It should be crafted on the pedestal in front of the portal. Hmm. You need to craft it in two parts, an emitter and a barrel. And here we have the three parts of the emitter. A mirror of pride, an eternal burning coal, and a salty fork. One of these seems a little bit easier to obtain than the rest. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, what about the second part? The second part of the book's text is covered with something sticky. I'll need to clean it off first. Oh no, it's actually a hentai. I think I'll need some acid and restoration tools to clean it. Oh boy. It's an acid, get restoration tool. So where can I find it? He wrote that his friends believed that all these things could be found in the town. I don't understand this, but he wrote that they were the soul of the town. It all sounds like a delusion to me. Magic. Ha. Huh. What nonsense. If I were you, I'd start with something you can see. First, I'd check the pedestal near the portal. Second, try to get to the town and find those items. So about that acid? You know where I can find it. I gave up alchemy many years ago. It's really a dead-end occupation. Dude, I feel you, man. Hard times nowadays. But I think I know where you can get some acid. There should be an old woman in the swamp. Plotho. She's definitely crazy, but in the distant past, she sold chemical ingredients. You know where I can find some restoration tools? There we may have a problem, young man. The Inquisition destroyed them all. Fools! They believe that past can only bring harm and curses. 
but I think you might still be able to find some on the black market. Somebody with criminal connections could help you. I definitely know the right guy. I should talk to Snake. Yeah. Looks like I'm going to have to talk with the Snakey boy again. Which means I'm going to have to get closer to him. Which means I'm going to have to get him that bucket of blood at some point. You know what? It's fine. And the bloody nails or rusty nails or whatever they were. At least now we have some further objectives and we don't need to speak to the astrologer for a little while. So we won't need to come all the way out here. We should probably go check out which hill though. Not which hill. The, oh yeah, which hill because that's where the portal is at. The pedestal in front of the portal is what we need to look at. And see what we need to make the first part of our escape. We back at it boys here on which hill. Hey, stop sneaking around. You've been warned. I'm just walking around normally, dude. There's nothing to see here. And what are you doing here? It's an ambush! Hmm, I'm not an expert, but it doesn't look like an ambush to me. Inquisitor had a bad dream about this portal and the cultists. So now we're waiting here for the cultists. What cultists? Hmm, the bad cultists. They're definitely connected with witches. Help me out here, Tom. They're, they're witch cultists, baby. They want to kill our beloved king. <laughs> if they win, hmm, they'll put an end to the Great Inquisition. Yeah, and we'll lose our jobs, isn't that right, Tom? Yeah, maybe you're a cultist, girl. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm the graveyard keeper, and I'm leaving. I can't check the pedestal while they're here. How do I get rid of them? Fight. Guy, guy. Why can't I check the pedestal while they're here? How do I get them to leave? Do I have to wait for the cultists to arrive or something? I'll chop down this bush. What do you think about that, hmm? Bet you didn't expect that. Ha! Huh. <laughs> I really showed them, those darn inquisitors. Well, I think I might end this episode a little bit early because it's already going to be coming out late today. Hopefully it's alright. I've been having a busy time right now. And having a hard time recording. But... We're still doing it. We're still playing this wonderful game, and I'm really enjoying it. And we don't have enough carrots yet. Dang it. I assume we'd have enough for another set of bodies, but I do have several burial certificates that I really should sell at some point. And at some point I'll do it, but not right now. For now, I'm going to end this episode off of Graveyard Keeper. Hopefully you all enjoyed this episode. If you did, I'd appreciate a like, comment, or a subscription. All of those really help me out. And that's all for now. I hope to see you all on the next adventure.